Taking a look at the front of the box, we can see that it's a square box and it's quite sort of slim and shallow. It's got quite a nice sort of style on it, very uh, professional looking. It tells us that it's the E35M1M Pro. There's a lot of stickers on here telling us the main features. Protect 3.0, a certificate of assurance, low radiation, eco-friendly anti-surge, the AMD Vision logo, E350 platform and Windows 7 ready. Also tells us that it's energy saving, has SATA 6G, USB 3.0, HDMI and 100% solid capacitors. Taking a look at the back of the box, once again the model number and it does show a brief sort of layout of the board and exactly what's on there. Full specifications over here and a little bit about the Protect 3.0 technology, SATA 6G and USB 3.0 support, the solid capacitors that are used, AI Suite 2 and the EFI BIOS which is a new GUI BIOS developed by Asus. And now opening the box up we can see inside that we have a user guide and looking at this gives us the full specifications, layout of the board, installation, memory configuration with the compatibility list, all about the jumpers and also a bit about the BIOS as well, so lots of information in there. We can see that we also have a driver installation CD, some serial ATA cables, there's four in total of which two in each pack are actually right angled, so all of them are right angled and they've all got metal clips on there to ensure that they stay fitted to your drives, which is really nice. And I love the colour scheme on this black and white. You can also see that we have a Asus case badge sticker which is sort of metal, Quite a basic I.O. panel, but you don't really need anything too fancy. We also get this bag with a 60mm optional fan for putting over the passive heatsink if you really want to use that. And also the mounting screws to put it on there. And lifting up the cardboard insert will reveal the motherboard in an anti-static bag. Now taking it out of the anti-static bag, we can get a first look of the board. The first thing that you'll notice about this board is the colour scheme. You can see straight away that it uses a blue and black sort of design and this is going to be really favoured by a lot of users because most people are sort of sick of the whole green PCB whereas this one's got a dark PCB, light blue PCI slots, dark blue and black on there as well and it is quite stylish. Obviously it's not going to be seen uh, most of the time because this sort of uh, motherboard will be used in servers, HTPCs and general systems that wouldn't have a window but if you do decide to use this in a case with a window it's going to look really really nice. The board itself uses a mini ITX form factor so you can see just by putting my hand over the top of it how small it really is but it does incorporate a lot and the whole design is really nothing out of the ordinary you've got the CPU socket area here as well as the memory slots, power, uh, all your data connections as well as your expansion slots and the rear I.O. They're all in the same sort of place that you'd expect on a full size motherboard so really nothing out of the ordinary. Turning the board over will reveal the brown PCB which isn't really to our liking but uh, you're never really going to see the sort of underside of it anyway so once it's turned over you get that blue and black scheme it looks really really nice. You can see exactly where the screws are for mounting the uh, big block heatsink on from this side and once you actually take this off it will reveal exactly what the Fusion APU looks like. Taking a look at the cooling on this board we can see that it has this massive heatsink covering over the Fusion APU. Now the specifications underneath this is that it has an integrated dual core AMD Zakati 18 watt processor. It supports all of the latest AMD uh, features including Cool and Quiet and it supports up to two Bobcat cores, has a DirectX 11 GPU and also uses the Hudson M1 chipset. Now straight away you can see that the heatsink follows the same sort of design as the rest of the board with the blue and black and it doesn't need a fan but they do actually supply a fan to go with this that so can just sort of bolt on top of here and aid in a little bit extra cooling. This board has two memory slots, we can see that one of the banks is blue and one is black and the reason behind that is that it supports single channel memory only. It does support up to 8GB of DDR3-1066 but we found that once we'd actually installed this system and went into the BIOS we did have the option of choosing 1333MHz so not quite sure what's going on there but Asus will have the right to update the specifications for this board as time goes on, BIOS updates come out and more. Now this board has got plenty of connectors, headers, whatever you want to call them. Uh, starting with up this end, we've actually got 
uh, the SP diff port hidden just behind here. We also have a front panel audio connectors here and also a firewire connector. Now one thing that this board has got which we didn't really expect is this row of pins here. Now this is actually an LPT connector which a lot of boards you really don't see that on these days so it's uh, a bit weird to actually see it on this board. And moving further down the board we can see that we have plenty of USB connections. There are actually four USB 2.0 connections and we also have the front panel connectors which is for your reset switch, your power switch, LEDs and we've also got this group of headers here for a COM port. Now as you'd expect on any motherboard there's a CMOS battery and you can also clear the CMOS as well. And just hidden behind here is a little LED and this is for standby LED so it just shows that you have got power going through to the motherboard and everything is a-okay. And down this end of the board closer to the memory slots we can see that we have a turbo key 2 switch for light overclocking and just behind it soldered into the board is an LED just to notify you when the key switch is switched on. For all your storage drives because you may be using this as a small home server you may want to plug sort of plenty of storage drives in there for all your films and music uh, anything like that you will find that it has got five serial ATA connectors. You can see that there are four here, two in each block, and just hidden behind it is another one. Now, these serial ATA ports do support six gig per second. Now, looking at the expansion slots on the card, we can see that the first one is up here. Now, this is a PCI Express 2.0 X16 slot, but does support X4 and X1 devices as well. We can see just underneath it is a PCI Express 2.0 X1 slot, for uh, sort of some of the latest expansion cards that are coming out on the market, you will find now that there are TV cards, uh, SATA RAID cards, all sorts that do support PCI Express. But for the legacy users who are going to be using this mainly for HTPC purposes, uh, and they may already have a TV card or something similar, you have got some legacy PCI 3.0 slots. Now taking a look at the power on the motherboard, obviously a motherboard does need power. We can see that there is a 24 pin ATX power connector here and a 4-pin power connector hidden behind here. And now taking a look at the rear I.O. panel because this is going to be something that's very important to the users who are going to be using this for HTPC purposes or maybe even a small server uh, because they're going to want to know which connections they'll be able to plug into this. So straight away we can see that we have a combo PS2 mouse keyboard port, two USB 2.0 ports, optical port which supports 8-channel audio, HDMI port, VGA, DVI, another two USB 2.0 ports, Firewire, eSATA which supports SATA 6 gig per second, a gigabit LAN RJ45 port, two USB 3.0 ports which are identified by the blue colouring as well as the sticker on top just to notify you if you're unsure and also for analogue audio as well. Okay so now we're looking at the Asus EFI BIOS utility and at the moment it's in easy mode as you can see up here. Now the first thing that you'll actually notice about this is it's not like your ordinary BIOS, it's uh, a GUI or GUI interface so uh, everything looks bright, colourful, vibrant and there's pictures which is uh, a really nice touch. Um, one other thing that you may notice is we have a mouse and uh, that is just fantastic. We've got a mouse we can control everything using the mouse so uh, fantastic news there. So, just going to talk you through the easy mode, then we'll look at the advanced mode and some of the features of this BIOS. So straight away you see we've got a massive clock up here with the wrong time and the wrong date, but we can change that in a minute. Uh, you can also see that it lists what motherboard we've got, the E35M1M Pro. The BIOS version, CPU type, uh, which is a fusion processor uh, or APU. Total memory, we've got 4 gig of DDR3 1066. It's actually DDR3 1800 but obviously this board can only do certain speeds and uh, 1800 isn't one of them. We can see uh, the speed of the processor, the build date uh, which was quite recently. Temperatures, CPU and motherboard. Uh, at the moment uh, we're looking at 58 degrees for the CPU. Obviously we are using it passively. If we were to use it with the additional fan that does come supplied that will go down quite a lot but the motherboard temperature nice and comfortable. Voltages for the CPU and the rails of the power supply which all seem fairly stable and the CPU fan speed once again if we did have it attached then that would make uh, some kind of difference and it would actually show a figure. Under here we can see system performance and it does give you this triangle for quiet performance and energy saving. At the moment you can see that we've got a little bit in each one but if I was to 
sort of highlight over the power saving you can see that it actually sort of sways over towards the energy saving and quiet mode not sure how much more quieter you can get with passive but uh, there you go at the moment we're on normal so it's nicely spread or we've got the asus optimal which does give you a lot of uh, performance a little bit of quiet and uh, less energy saving but it all depends on your uses what you're going to need it for and so forth uh, we can see that we have the brute priority down here so clicking on that um, this is basically our, our first boot drive. If we had more drives in here, um, then we could sort of drag this one over to there and then another one in front of it and so forth. But at the moment, there is just one drive with a partition on there. If we click on boot menu, you can see that we have actually got two drives and you can click on any one of them, uh, which sort of does a, a dual boot feature. So you might have Windows 7 on this one and Linux on this one. You can just go into here, go into the boot menu, click on it, and it will start booting the relevant operating system. Uh, default does exactly what it says on the tin and that is pretty much it for the easy mode um, if we click up here where it says exit advanced mode you get the usual discard changes and exit or save changes and reset or the advanced mode so clicking on that and everything changes so the first thing that we will notice what's different in the advanced mode is we've got all these tabs up the top and uh, quite a few of them there are first one being the main tab this tells you your BIOS information, CPU information, memory, system language, system date and system time as well as security so clicking on that you can set up passwords for the BIOS or for the actual computer itself coming back out of that um, that's pretty much all that's in that tab so very simple but to the point AI tweaker which we've seen on many Asus boards in the past we can see that we have the AI overclock tuner so setting that to manual we can then raise the FSB and so forth and um, we can also see if we set that back to auto um, that we have the memory frequency at the moment it's at 1066 we want to get the very most out of it so we'd be setting it to 1333 and um, you have also got EPU power saving mode you can enable or disable that OC tuner and um, just clicking that will take you to the OC tuner DRAM timing controls is where you can fiddle with all your cast latencies, your raster cast delay, um, what sort of timings they have and so forth. Just down from there we can see that we've got all our voltages. So we've got CPU voltage at the moment set to auto. Um, we can see what sort of increments it goes up in. DRAM voltage may be important if you are sort of using this to overclock ever so slightly and so forth. Advanced tab. In here we've got lots of information. CPU configuration tells you more about your processor. You can enable or disable cool and quiet as well as a few other little CPU features. SATA configuration is where you can see uh, if you're going to be using IDE or AHCI and um, what speed you're going to be using SATA 3 or SATA 6G and we can see what drives we've actually got on there two Kingston SSD 64 gig thank you Kingston. Uh, USB configuration we can see that we have legacy USB support and it has actually got USB 3.0 support and that's already enabled. Northbridge configuration is where you can fiddle with some of the settings for the PCI Express video or if you're going to be using integrated graphics onboard devices that sort of stems off of that with the HD audio whether you want to use HD or AC 97 and we can also see a very nice feature I think is the controller um, enabling or disabling it but it does tell you who actually makes it so we can see that the 1394 Firewire is actually made by VIA the LAN is made by Realtek and the USB 3.0 as media so if you do need to get drivers it's very nice to, to be able to see exactly who uh, who the controller chip is made by and then you've got your usual serial port and parallel port configurations and coming out of that last thing we got on there is APM which is just about powering on via your mouse or keyboard monitor in here we've got a CPU temperature we have been running it for quite some time now so it's sitting at 60 degrees obviously that is the a fan that comes with it if you do decide to use that and that should drop temperatures quite a lot but we'll see how that fares in our temperature tests motherboard temperature and um, CPU fan speed if there was a CPU fan on there and also sort of controlling the fan and so forth and also down below we can see all the voltages for your power supply CPU voltage and anti-surge support next tab along is the boot tab very simple stuff tells you uh, what hard drives you've got and the last tab is tool which uh, comes with the Asus Easy Flash 2 utility and the Asus Overclock Profile. Now, just having a quick look at this, it seems like it's a very uh, nice feature that DFI uh, boards used to have in the past where you can actually set up various different overclock profiles. So you can sort of, uh, it's good for overclockers because they don't have to remember all their settings, they can just go back to a certain profile. Very nice indeed. So one thing you will notice uh, is the GUI interface and secondly, the fact that you have mouse support. 
and uh, to be honest it looks very simple but it does do the trick some people may think that they need more options but there isn't really anything more that you'd need that it hasn't already got you've got your overclocking tools you've got your advanced you've got your monitor for uh, obviously it's going to aid in overclocking if you are doing that or just general usage boot modes and even the ability to set up overclock profiles everything you need in one place